Hi guys, welcome back to another amazing episode of Student Talks where we make you move from progress to success. So in this episode, we're going to talk about the specific field of science and engineering being offered at Curtin University, which is located in Perth, Australia. If you want an intro about this university, you can always watch uh, the episode number one of this podcast series. So uh, this goes without saying that a lot of students from Pakistan would be interested in this field and this uh, episode will help them analyze and uh, choose for themselves of what options would be uh, better suited to them. So uh, Curtin has maintained the rank of second in the world for mineral and mining engineering in the QS World University rankings by subject 2020. This makes it the highest ranked university in uh, Australia to study this globally relevant and sought after course. Sounds interesting, right? So uh, without further ado, I'm going to invite uh, our guest for today. And uh, I'm going to invite Ms. Begonia Sanchez, who is the International Recruitment Consultant for Science and Engineering at Curtin University, and uh, Professor Mark Stoitis, who is the Director of Student Engagement for Curtin University. Hello. Hello. Hi. <laughs> Hello. How are you doing? Well, Good, thank, thank you, Namira. I feel like, as I said, I feel like I'm in a weather report, but I'll do that a bit later on. <laughs> okay. So um, I hope things are going uh, well in Perth. We have been hearing some good news, but I would, how, what would you guys say about that? Well, we're, we're very lucky here in, in Perth. Uh, it's about 25 degrees out there at the moment, and our students are floating around getting in and out of their classes. We're very happy to say that we um, we haven't had community transmission in, in Perth or Western Australia for nearly for over six months now, which makes us one of the leading areas in the world for, for, for our fight against COVID, well, the global fight against COVID. So obviously for us and our students and our way of life here, we are going on as normal as we possibly can. Um, in saying that, I extend all of my um, my love uh, out to the Pakistani people and hope that they're doing just as well as we are, and, and hope that they're uh, they're fighting this 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 terrible thing that's become pop, come upon us this this year. Yeah, let's just let's just hope for things to get better as soon as they can. So, okay, uh, let's uh, just dive into our today's topic, shall we? Mm hmm. Sure. Okay, so uh, today we are going to discuss a very important topic for I think most of the students out there, which you know needs to cover the prospect for students in the field of science and technology at Curtin University. Can you kindly give us a brief overview of this field? Sure. Um, so there are a lot of opportunities in science and engineering for uh, all the students who want to come to Curtin University. At the Faculty of Science and Engineering, we have courses uh, ranging from um, mathematics, um, physics, but also mechanical, civil. So it's a broad range of courses in science and engineering. And also we uh, we have undergraduate degree, postgraduate degrees and, and research opportunities. Uh, so it's up to the student, um, whatever they want to study, we have like this broad range of courses available for them. All right. Okay. Anything specific about uh, the field? Do you think students are pretty interesting in it? Interested in it? I think, from from my point of view, we 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 are a uh, technical university from our heritage, and so we were very very much industry connected and industry related. So our students, no matter what they're studying in the faculty, we have a lot to do with industry. So. As an example of engineers do an industry project as part of their honours degree, our science students have the opportunity to do internship placements, and Master of Professional Engineering students have opportunities to get out and do real-time work. So our, our courses here are really for those students who want hands-on experience in the field. We are desperately trying to set up our students with the best possible prospect in, in, in their own work life. So that's really our, our main goal here in the faculty. We, we, that, that, that's what we pride ourselves on. Okay, 
Uh, that's great. So, how would you describe Perth um, Curtin University in general? You know, for international students coming out there, you know that students coming abroad, they have tons of expectations. And what would you say? How's the lifestyle for them living over there? Well, it's really, really exciting. Uh, I've been an international student and I can say um, that we have a pretty multicultural campus, not only with uh, international students, but also with the staff. So it's a really uh, welcome community. There are a lot of facilities for students to study, but also enjoy. We have the food trucks. Um, um, so we have different cafes and there are a lot of activities available for them. Something really important as well in the campus life is the guild and, and the students association so they can join any club and have extracurricular activities to complement uh, their studies. So really, really exciting lifestyle here at Curtin. So, I mean, just, yeah, just to add to that, as, as I've kind of yeah, said yeah, sure. before, I think the, first, the first year here for any international student is always met with a bit of apprehension. But once they get into yeah. the Western Australian way of life, um, as I say, the coldest we get is about 20 degrees. The hottest we get is around 35 or 36 across the year. And our transport network and all that kind of thing are, are first class uh, around the world. So the ability to get around Perth and to, and to live a very free lifestyle is, is what we pride ourselves on. So it's not just about what the university does, it's how the community embraces our international students. Perth is one of the most multicultural cities as well in Australia. And as I say to students who come here, that, that they will get a great Pakistani meal anywhere they want, just, just <laughs> like any other food. Um, and it's really important that that little taste of home exists for them. So, yeah, we're, we're really proud of, what, of how we support our international students at the university. That sounds great. It sounds very appealing. Okay. So uh, can you talk about the faculty to student ratio in this field? And how about the class and laboratories? Uh, how much students can be accommodated? Brilliant. I'm happy to talk about that. So, so I mean, our, our student to staff ratio is, is about one in, one in 30 or one in 40, depending on what area. And that, and that all depends on the areas that we, we teach. What I will say, though, is our maximum laboratory size is around about 20 to 25. Our maximum tutorial classes are around about 30. So, you know, I mean, we, we, we don't do huge lectures here. They, they're all fully online these days in order to make sure that our students are well protected. But when they walk into class, they're walking in with around about 20 to 30 people in that particular class. So they're really getting that 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 time with their with their um, academic staff member and their professors. And to us, that's really, really important. So, again, we don't do anything above above 30, really, generally speaking, for, for our for our tutorial laboratory classes or workshops. And so that's that's very much on purpose to make sure our students are well supported. All right. OK, so uh, do you think that uh, it can uh, accommodating students in the field of science and engineering can be a bit trickier than in, in any other course? Um. I wouldn't say so. I think that um, obviously the students need to meet the entry requirements for the courses. Uh, and depending on the course, they will need different qualifications if it's undergraduate or postgraduate. But the most important is that uh, even if the student doesn't meet the, the, uh, the requirement, we will always have pathways. It can be pathways for English or academic pathways. So there will be always an alternative entry um, to come to Curtin. And, and again, just to add to that, we're, we're always trying to make sure that our entry, entry standards set up our students for success. So we, we don't take students into our courses unless they're, they're, they've made the correct, the correct entry standards. We always are there to support them if they haven't in order to give them pathways as, as Bigger has touched on. But we're really, really passionate about making sure that our students have the best chance of success. So we don't just take them without that, that that appropriate background. And we think that's best for everybody, including the student. That's at the front of mind. Yeah, yeah that totally makes sense. Okay, so now comes a very, very important question. Uh, so do you think um, Curtin University uh, guarantees or you know helps the students to achieve uh, sustaining jobs and positions, especially in this field of science and engineering. Like, would you say that this field would create the prospect of a promising uh, career for students? 
there are, as, as we were saying, there are a lot of opportunities for our students to connect with the industry while they are studying. So this is an advantage for them to be ready when they when they finish their, their degree. Also, depending on what they study, for example, I have some notes here for civil engineering, there are um, an expectation to uh, for the market to grow, also for electrical engineering engineers. So it will depend on, on the field, but there are great opportunities for for the students. Um, also, uh, our graduates are among the Western Australian universities, one of the highest salaries once they graduate and one of the first finding full-time employment. So that talks a lot about the, um, the opportunities and how um, industry ready they are when they finish. And, okay. and again, just to add that, talking about the curriculum. So from, from the very first year that a student arrives, they are, they're expected to, to interact and work with industry on, on numerous projects. So in engineering, it's pro professional projects. In the MPE, they have to do internship placements, as well as um, having to complete 480 hours of professional placement of which we support them through in, in the engineering degree. So when they leave their, their degrees here at the university, they, they already have those industry links, which we which we know all the research says assist in, 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 in getting students that, that foot in the door. So. Yeah, look, we, we, we've structured our courses to give our students the most optimal opportunity to, to walk straight out and into a job. That's, that's what one of our key, key drivers is here. All right. Okay, great. So we have a question here on the live session. Uh, could you uh, please ask them, okay, regarding the scholarships and work placements? Can you talk okay. about that? Um, I can I can go with the scholarship first. So we uh, at Curtin International we have different scholarships for international students. So we have one one which is the merit scholarship, which gives twenty five percent discount of the first year of, of tuition fees for the students. So students that don't need to apply, we will assess that application, and once the students receive the offer letter, they will know if they have that scholarship already. Also, a really special scholarship that we have only for science and engineering for our undergraduate degrees, um, undergraduate students, uh, we have the merit extensions. Uh, that can give 25% discount for the whole duration of the course. The student needs to get a course weight average of 80, but that can be a 25% discount for the whole duration of the course. Now, right. depending okay. on the course that a student goes in around work placements, our postgraduate Master of Professional Engineering students have access to an internship as part of their course if they choose to access it. Undergraduate students, having having a, 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 a longer degree, have access to our careers and leadership area as well as our um, work and degree learning area, which does assist them in, in, in finding those placements and doing those hours as well. So, yeah, the faculty is is very much... Um, geared and always trying to find these find these opportunities for students as they are here. And for engineering students in particular, it's actually a requirement of their course. So yeah, it, it, look, it's, it's, we, look, that's our history and that's what, that's what we continue to strive to do our best in for our students. Okay, great. So, um, all right, sounds great. Uh, so, uh, just before concluding this, I have this fun question that I asked Surat in my last session as well. Okay, so you know how when students are uh, there, they are uh, studying, but they would need a lifestyle uh, along with that, obviously. So uh, for that perfect weekend getaway, some can you suggest some landmarks, some places that you know places to visit for students? Well, I, I, I've just come back. I've just come back from Rottnest Island. So anyone that's watching, I, I suggest that you Google Rottnest Island. I was there with my two children for a night on Saturday night. It's forty minutes off the coast of Western Australia by ferry, and it is a beautiful place to go for a weekend getaway. For those of you who enjoy a fine red or white wine, there is a three-hour drive to a wine region referred to as Margaret River. Again, you know, I, I'm a beer person, but there's there's a great winery uh, wineries available down there. Going up north, we have beautiful Ningaloo Reef, which is a bit further up and all the rest of it. Western Australia is the size of, uh, nearly nearly the size of Europe and the UK put together. So therefore there are plenty of places to go, not just for weekend okay. getaways, but weekly getaways. Uh, it's, a, it's a very, very large place. Um, and you know, you make a really relevant point, 
but just just 15 minutes from this campus are one of the most beautiful beaches in, in the world as well with Cottesloe Beach and City Beach and all the rest of it. So it's not just about what we do. As you can tell, Bigo and I have beautiful tans and it's very important <laughs> that we that we maintain those here in, in Western Australia. So I think it's a different way of life and for and for any student that's looking for a different for a change of pace to 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 um to their life, then Western Australia is the place to be for that, particularly now more than ever, I think. Okay, okay. So uh, that sounds great. I'd love to be there. <laughs> okay, so uh, we have a question. Uh, okay, when will the borders be open for international students? <laughs> Well, that, that is, that is, is a I very tough so. one. Bego, Bego, Bego and I uh, probably can't answer that as well as we would like. We, we, would, we would believe that's at some time during, during 2021. Yeah. We, we don't know uh, yet. Obviously, we are working with, with the government, but it's really important that the students know that um, we are encouraging them to have everything ready, all the students' uh, visa ready. So once the borders are open, they are ready to come. Uh, and study face to face. All right. Okay. Yeah. Let's. As I said before, let's hope for the best. And okay. So it's time to conclude our session. And before we do that, I would really uh, request you both to say anything motivating or you know anything uh, encouraging about joining this field, applying here, because uh, you know how students uh, sometimes they lack direc direction. They would like some guidance, some counseling along their way. So would you want to say something to them, any of the students that are watching this? Um, from my point of view, I, I am not from a science and engineering uh, background. And I think that a student who is into that field, I can see that the community is really engagement, engaging. I mean, the students are really committed and really passionate. So that's something that I really like when I work with um, academics and with the students from that field. So that will be something that our students and prospective students will find at Kerting University, a really passionate uh, community, academics that are really committed to the teaching and also to their students. Um, Apart from that, if uh, any of your students need um, a personal one-on-one -on -one with me, I'm really happy to have an appointment with them anytime, so that wouldn't be a problem. That's really nice of you. That sounds great. Uh, what about you, Mark? Would you like to say something? Well, for, for me, um, as a director of student engagement for the faculty, I, I would simply say, simply say to students that um, that doing something outside of their comfort zone and coming to a, to, to to Australia or Western Australia is in itself uh, an experience. Coming to this university is is obviously the, the the driver of that. But being able to say that you came and studied in another country, um, succeeded, experienced another culture while you're still young, I'd love to be able to do that now. But my wife and children would never let me. So I suppose. For those who are sitting on the fence, that the time is now to do it while you're young and, and have the time. And 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 if nothing, if the world has showed us nothing recently, it's the fact that it can be taken away from you at any given time. And 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 to get out there and have an experience is really important, um, not just for for your academic life, but for your personal life. So, come come and enjoy, enjoy it. Yeah, that that sounds about right. Thank you so much, you two. Uh, it was lovely uh, chatting with you. This session has been very informative. I'm sure uh, the students watching uh, this have uh, had a good time as well. I know I love love the session. Hope you did too. <laughs> Thank Thanks, you. Samira. All the best. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, so, uh, so guys, this brings us to the end of another episode of Student Talks. I hope you learned uh, something from this and uh, like watching it. And if uh, any, if you have any queries, you can always direct message us and we'll be here to help. And um, see you in the next episode. Till then, goodbye and take care. <laughs>